Hi everyone, today's presentation is on constructing currency portfolio indexes in MetaTrader 4 and prerequisites include uh, experience in trading strategy development. That doesn't necessarily have to be you actively developing it as in programming it. Uh, you may have come up with an idea and programmed it yourself or you may have come up with an idea and uh, had someone else develop it. As long as you are familiar with the process, uh, you should be okay. MQL4 programming experience is optional today as we, we aren't actually actively covering anything in this presentation that requires programming experience. However, there is source code at the end uh, that is provided, which implements everything we discussed today, uh, for which MQL4 programming experience would obviously be uh, necessary. But to follow the contents of the presentation, you should be okay with or without MQL4 expertise. In terms of agenda, we'll start out by discussing what a currency index is. Uh, we'll discuss some examples using the eight major currencies, the Euro, British Pound, US Dollar, Canadian Dollar, Swiss Franc, Japanese Yen, Aussie Dollar, and New Zealand Dollar. We will also discuss applications of the, uh, the same currency index uh, thought process to custom portfolios and describe some uh, example objectives uh, behind constructing custom portfolios, making indexes out of them, why you would need them, what benefits they pose, uh, etc. We'll follow that up with discussing the composition and parity of a currency index, which uh, translates to what goes into it in terms of assets, in terms of currency pairs, and uh, uh, in what proportion. So parity comes in there. The logic and construction will come next, where we'll describe um, how to put this index together and uh, the calculation that goes into it uh, and its general overall construction so that it can be turned into something um, with some utility, for example, an indicator. Uh, we'll share source code towards the end uh, that we've developed that implements whatever we've discussed today uh, for currency indexes. We've designed it in a way that you can plug and play currency, in, uh, currency pairs into it to create custom portfolios uh, with uh, any number of assets and any composition you choose and any proportions you choose. So it's very, very flexible and full source code has been provided on our GitHub profile, a link to which will be shared with you uh, later on in this presentation. We'll conclude with some additional use cases um, of currency indexes uh, where we, uh, we, we'll talk about composing custom portfolios of indexes. So not necessarily the US dollar index or the euro index, but something custom based on an objective you have in mind. That could be monitoring market volatility, generalizing market volatility. That could be creating um, an indicator out of an asset mix for for your current trading strategy or a trading strategy you are thinking of deploying. Uh, so there are uh, uh, quite a few uses to uh, composing indexes out of assets like that uh, over and above just using them for currency pairs uh, to monitor currency movements overall. So let's begin with what a currency index is. Uh, currency index measures the evolution or strength in one major currency relative to a basket of all other major currencies. And these include the eight that we just talked about from the Euro all the way to the New Zealand dollar. Um, with a single currency pair, so let's just say, for example, the British pound Japanese yen, when you're monitoring the movements of the British pound Japanese yen, for example, an uptrend in the pair will symbolize a strengthening of the pound versus the yen. And this information is based on only these two particular currencies, the British pound and the yen and vice versa. By monitoring just this pair though, a trader knows how the British pound is behaving versus just the Japanese yen and not against any other currency in the pool of major currencies available. So, um, by, uh, but not how the GBP and JPY currencies are behaving independently of each other, not just against each other. With a currency index, however, this problem is resolved. An uptrend in the British pound index indicates a strengthening of the British pound relative to the entire basket of currencies it is against. So if we compose the GBP index, we are monitoring its strength, uh, its uh, uptrends or downtrends, etc., against the other major currencies, these being the euro, um, all the way through to the Swiss franc, excluding the British pound, because the British pound is against those other currencies when monitoring this particular index. Now, using these same principles of constructing currency indexes for a major currency, such as the euro index or the GBP index, you can build custom portfolios of currency pairs 
um, and this enables a few outcomes. You, uh, diversification of risk. So you could create a custom portfolio of currency pairs where you your intention is to trade the custom portfolio of currency pairs. By doing so, you diversify your risk across several assets as opposed to just one or two or more uh, assets where you are restricted to not only the movement profile of the asset itself, um, but you're also at higher risk because now you are dependent on a very small, if not just one or two, uh, number of assets. Drawdowns in some currency pairs, when you're creating portfolios of currency pairs, the drawdowns in some pairs can be compensated for and sometimes even exceeded by gains in the other pairs. So there's, again, a relation to the diversification of risk. You're also cancelling out uh, risk between pairs by employing a larger pool of hopefully uncorrelated uh, or reasonably uncorrelated assets. You can also create custom indexes uh, to track and or uh, trade particular market behaviors. So if there's an inefficiency that you've spotted uh, in uh, the way a certain asset mix behaves, uh, you, uh, you can benefit from creating a portfolio out of it and use this implementation that we're discussing today to track the movement, the progress of that particular portfolio. In terms of composition, uh, composition and parity, what goes into an index and uh, in what proportion? Uh, it's calculated, each index is calculated relative to a basket of currency pairs. So whatever the index is, whether it's a major currency index or a custom index that you've designed, it's all relative to a basket of currency pairs where the in, in this particular case where we're talking about major currency indexes, in a major currency indexes, that basket would be chosen such that each pair contains the concerned currency in either the base or the quote component. The pairs combined include all eight major currencies. Uh, so that's all the way from the euro through to the Swiss franc uh, and the New Zealand dollar as we discussed, all eight pairs, all eight major currencies. And uh, where the concerned currency, let's say we're focusing on the euro index, where the concerned currency is the quote component of a pair, the parity of that pair needs to be reversed. So for example, when calculating the British pound currency index, the GBP index, Euro GBP needs a parity, a proportion of minus one, making it negative Euro GBP to adjust for relative GBP strength, which basically means because the GBP is the quote component, it has to be changed, uh, negated. The parity needs to be negated to make it a part of this pool so that you can monitor the GBP against the rest of the currencies. For example, the basket of currency pairs for the Euro index is the Euro dollar, Euro GBP, uh, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen, Swiss franc, and Canadian dollar. Now, in this case, the euro forms the base component of all the currency pairs in its basket. So since uh, it contains the euro and it has all the other major currencies in it, it forms the basket that represents this index. So additionally, as each currency pair has euro as the base component, the parity of each pair in this basket is plus one, so no changes need to be made. The remaining currency indexes in this fashion, uh, following these rules, the rules being that it must contain all eight major currencies and the parities need to be such that you uh, create an index, the main component of the index, for example, the USD being the base component. And if you have a pair included in there that does not have USD as the base component, then you have to negate the parity to make it such. And that way you can construct a, an index for each major currency. Um, and I've outlined here what those indexes will look like in terms of their composition and their parities, a minus or a plus indicating how you would treat that particular asset given the location, either base or quote, of its main component, which is the US dollar in this case. Uh, for example, the euro dollar has the USD as the quote component here. We had to negate the parity to make it the um, reverse in order to include it in the USD index. Calculation logic and construction. So what goes into assessing how this index behaves? Each currency index, IX at time T, uh, where rate total, rate underscore total time periods are available for processing can be mathematically represented as follows. So this formula can be interpreted as the current value of an index is equal to the most recent previous value of the index. And so the currency um, index's value at time t is equal to its value at time t minus 1 multiplied by the combined returns of all assets in that mix in this index 
weighted by the weights, <coughs> the parity parameters that we set, adjusted for the number of assets in the index. To put things simply, all assets combined allow us to calculate the contribution uh, towards the index's next value, and that's how we go ahead and plot it. Code is provided later on that uh, demonstrates this uh, inside an indicator, and you can also read the code to better understand how that returns calculation is made as well, if the formula for some people is slightly daunting to observe. Now, the contribution of each currency pair, as I discussed just now, in an index's basket is calculated uh, as in this formula that we've seen just now. And it's indexed in our implementation, the one that's provided in the source code later on, to base 100 from a chosen start date. You're allowed to specify the start date uh, in the indicator code provided later as well. The source code provided allows the user to set the start date, as I just said, for calculating the first point in the currency index, therefore starting at base 100. A default start, rate, uh, start date that we've set is January 1, uh, 2015. You are welcome to change that to whatever uh, you wish. There's no restriction on uh, the start date. Uh, custom currency portfolios um, can be constructed in similar fashion using exactly this logic. So here, so far, we've been talking about a major currency index where the index is composed of assets that allow us to follow two rules. The first rule being that the index uh, asset mix should all of them together should include all major currencies, including the item itself, the index currency itself. Uh, and secondly, the parities need to be such that everything is adjusted so that the index you're trying to monitor, let's say the euro index, is uh, uh, adjusted such that it forms the base component of all the assets. So possible use cases of constructing a custom cu currency portfolio, in this case, where you're not necessarily monitoring uh, a major currency index, you're monitoring portfolio A, and portfolio A has a certain objective or a certain market dynamic or, or movement that you'd like to monitor, such as uh, maybe you're forecasting volatility, or maybe you're measuring the um, correlation of your strategies, your existing trading strategies returns to overall general market volatility. The, there are possible use cases um, um, are um, limitless for how you can use indexes in that fashion. You can construct any number of indexes using any number of currency pairs and any um, proportions, uh, parities that you choose to uh, uh, basically bring to life uh, your idea or your trading model or your monitoring model or anything to that effect and do that in exactly the same fashion as we've just discussed for using uh, for constructing major currency indexes. You can also design long, short currency portfolio strategies in this fashion. So say you have a portfolio of assets that you'd like to trade, and you'd like to come up with a way to be able to trade them all together for the purposes of diversifying risk or for uh, the purposes of uh, following a certain market dynamic, as we've just discussed. And you'd, you'd like to long and short individual components uh, of that asset mix accordingly uh, by constructing uh, an index that will allow you to visualize the movement of such um, such a mix of assets and you can do so. Um, uh, you can bring that objective to life by constructing an index out of it as we've discussed today. Source code in MQL4 has been provided uh, on our GitHub profile. So if you visit github.com forward slash DarwinX forward slash DarwinX labs, um, you will be able to see our entire tree of tools and research and data sets. Uh, you would need to proceed to the tools directory in the master tree and then go into the MQL4 directory where you'll find two files, dlabs underscore currency index dot MQ4 and dot MQH. The specifics of installing these are uh, presented in the blog post that we did on constructing a currency index uh, indicator, and that's on the DarwinX blog. Uh, simply go to the DarwinX blog and search for currency index or currency indicator in MQL4 and uh, in MetaTrader 4, and you should find the blog post that details the uh, specific of the installation towards the end of the blog post. Finally, with additional use cases, um, there are plenty of things you can do, some of which are detailed here. So for creating and monitoring portfolios that are, for example, representative of general Forex market volatility, that's something you can do by constructing an index out of that particular portfolio or, or asset mix for various portfolios. Designing long short currency portfolio strategies, also something we discussed earlier. Uh, designing custom indicators to track market dynamics 
um, evaluating the correlation of a strategy's returns to its underlying asset mix. And then um, this allows you to act on that information too. So if you're quite highly correlated, if the returns of your strategy are quite highly correlated to the movements of the underlying asset mix of your strategy, that uh, may be a good or bad thing depending on um, how you're performing and how the dynamics of that portfolio is performing. So by uh, creating an index out of it, it allows you to visualize that and make more informed decisions. Uh, creating custom multi-currency indicators becomes possible when you're creating indexes like this. In MetaTrader 4, you can um, deploy the standard factory shipped indicators to a particular chart, uh, but there's no um, there's no uh, factory shipped feature that allows you to deploy uh, an indicator that covers multiple assets uh, in um, in one place. So using our implementation, you can do that. You can create an indicator that follows several assets, any number of assets uh, with any number of uh, with any proportions you set um, uh, in one window without having to open as many windows as there are assets in your portfolio. And finally, for more advanced users, um, price-driven feature engineering for machine learning projects or research that you're conducting becomes possible when you're creating currency indexes this way. So it is uh, it's now possible by creating an indicator like this or creating an index um, using the formula that we've talked about, the, the actual logic, to create features, additional features over and above price and other factors that you may be incorporating into a machine learning led uh, effort. So thank you very much um, for watching. And if there are any questions to do with the contents of this presentation, please do feel free to post them in the comment section below on this YouTube page. Um, if you'd like to install the files that have been discussed uh, in this presentation, then please proceed to the DarwinX blog and look for the post currency indicator for MetaTrader 4. Uh, towards the end of that blog post, you will find detailed instruction, instructions on how to install um, uh, the files uh, for this implementation. And thirdly, if there's anything you feel has been um, covered uh, too thin or not done really well in this presentation that you have additional questions for, either post them, as I said earlier, on on this page in the YouTube comments, or feel free to write us at uh, info at darwinx.com, and myself or one of my colleagues will be more than happy to assist you with your query. Thank you very much again, and see you on the next presentation.